Hello everybody and welcome to Dr. Lady's World and as he told you we are here again to talk about ray tracing. So in this case we are going to open some projects that are using ray tracing. So we don't need to say anything else and let's start with the party. So now we are here again in Unreal Engine in our first stereo theme. But this is something particular because I'm working here with 3ds Max, Unreal and also with Twinmotion to design all this vegetation. So the question is can you do it? Of course and we talk about that in the next video tutorial. So we are here with an exterior scene and we are going to see some parameters and some functions to use with ray tracing. Now let's go back again to our post-process volume and we go here to for example our global illumination. We are using a final gather. We can use for example this, the brute force. And it goes most performant but also you have more quality. So let's go back again to our final gather. So now we are here using a screen space reflections, okay? Analog check with ray tracing reflections. Really nice quality. Okay, let's go to translucency. We are going to check the raster and the ray tracing translucency. So if you remember in the first part of this video tutorial, we have here our source angle. I decided to use a lower value to have a crisp shadows like that. You can increase this value. You can put it in 2 points, 5 points. And this will use softened shadows for our directional light. But finally I decided to use a lower value to have more defined shadows like that. Here I'm using again an HDRI backdrop with this map. And also I have here my skylight. We are using the intensity, here it's 1.5, you can put it in 0 and, and you can perfectly see how it's changing our skylight. And also we mentioned these parameters on the first part of this video tutorial. You have cast ray tracing shadows, reflections and also the global illumination. And also we can say this is the most complex thing and I really like to work exteriors with ray tracing. We go here to our optimization build modes and let's check for our light map density. I look at this here, this is something great because I didn't work the light map density. So I don't really need to spend my time uh, checking this parameter in every mesh. Now we are going to talk about something really important about ray tracing and vegetation. So we check here this plant. Okay. And now we go to our materials and uh, let's check for this material, this flower. Now, as you can see here, this is a conversion from Twinmotion to Unreal Engine. Let's open here. Okay, and now look at this parameter, it's a wall position offset. Okay. So with this parameter in our material, we create a wind effect in our vegetation. But as you can see here, we have uh, some leaks in our shadows. So what we're gonna do is we wanna find here wall position offset. Uh, let's check this parameter. And now everything is working better. So for example, if we uncheck it, this leak appears again. And if we check it again, it disappears, okay? Something that is important, this only working in our static meshes. So this is not working in, for example, our grass landscape. And talking about the grass, we're gonna look for another parameter. This is not about ray tracing. But you have here one parameter in your, for example, in your directional light. You have the contact shadows. And this is really nice. If you want to increase your shadows, you can increase your contact shadows like that. And as you can see, you have more darker shadows around your grass. So for example, in this theme, we can talk about the lights and more things that we have added, but I don't want to focus just in this thing. I want to jump to other thing and keep talking about ray tracing. So people, now we are here again with the party and we are going to see an interior thing that we are using two techniques. In one side, we are working with baggy lights and in the other side, we are working with ray tracing reflections and translucency. So in this case, you can ask yourself why to use begging lights if you have, for example, ray tracing global illumination. So the main answer is performance. So now look at this here. We are moving around this thing and it's working more or less at 30 frames per second. This depending of the part and it's depending of the modeling of our meshes. 
if you are using both techniques and you use your baking lights and also dry tracing for reflections and translucency, it offers great quality and also great performance. So this one technique I use to work with architectural visualization projects. There aren't really sure what I can align in, also I don't need to move objects in my thing. And now let's open our light map density view mode. And now you can see here pretty well how I'm using my light maps with high quality and density. Okay. Let's go to lighting only. And this is the baggy light in our thing. Let's go and look some parts here. For example, look at this really nice quality in our baggy lights. And this is really important because we cannot compare a baggy light process like that with a ray tracing global illumination in real time. As you see, you have more precision and also more performance. So now talking about the lights, we are using a directional light, this one. I got it in a static mode because I'm not using dynamic objects in my steam. So also I have set the sun values as you can see. And also I have here a blueprint with HDRI and using inside the skylight. It's in a static mode. I set some parameters like intensity and also our intensity for the indirect illumination. This is a simple project and it's an inspiration from the architect Hiroshi Nakamura. And what I want to do is to work the wood materials as you can see here. I'm more or less trying to do it my own way. Now we are here in another room of this project and this is what I want to show you. We are working at a great performance and also with a great quality. And look at this here, we are not using a real light here, we are using a material with an emissive parameter. So like that is really easy. You can set this parameter, use emissive for static lighting and this emissive material affects to our baggy light. So as you can see, this is a great technique to work in project like that. And you know that you don't need to change your lights. Also, you don't need to move objects. And it offers a great performance and really great high quality. And also what you need to think is what I'm going to do with my final project. So for example, if you render a full high quality or you are making a video, you need to be careful using some aspects like global illumination with ray tracing. And now people, we are here in a really different project. This is a short movie film project that everything is moving and everything is interacting. I'm pretty sure if I don't have ray tracing, this is going to be really difficult to work. In this project, I'm using all the parameters with ray tracing. So in this case, ray tracing, global illumination, reflection, translucency, ambient occlusion, everything. As I told you in this project, there are many objects moving, interacting. I'm going to show you one part of this project with the cinematic sequencer. Okay. Chicos, se están alejando, pero tenemos poco tiempo. Menuda película te has montado. <risa> Como siempre, Teodora, y ahora activa Droni 2000. De acuerdo, Droni 2000. Ayuda a Wii Robot. So this is a little preview, and I think you can understand how important it's ray tracing to work in a project like that. And this is really important because using this technique, you can do more complex projects with uh, with really great animations. But of course, you need to be worried about your performance. Now let's see here, and um, I want to show you the lighting here. It's plenty of light, and you see a blueprint with a light studio with this skylight. Uh, it's immovable, of course, and with the same parameters that we have seen in the previously part of this video tutorial. And also, I have here some red lights and some spotlights. So now we are here with this cinematic. Let's move and you're going to see how while I'm moving our lights are switching off. This is really nice because you can work with dynamic lights in your project and using global illumination. You see it in real time. So let's play this part and you'll see it. And 
And now we are here in the exterior scene of this project, so let's go to this cinematic. Let's move. And, and now you are watching in real time how it's working. Let me check this one, okay? How it's working everything with ray tracing activated. You have everything here in your post process volume. For example, the ray tracing, reflections, global illumination, translucency, everything you got it here. And this is another scene of the project, um, working in the exterior. Okay, so let's play here. As you can see, it's working really great in real time. With a great performance. And really nice. So let's look this curious shot also. We do a play here. And again we are working with a really great performance and also with a great quality. And now keep watching because I want to show you some projects where I'm using ray tracing. Ok people, now we are here at the end of this video tutorial and I hope you can understand what a great things you can do with this great and amazing technology. We have seen some projects and we have learned the main parameters to work with ray tracing. So people like I always say, if you like it, if you enjoy it, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you in the next video tutorial. Bye bye!